Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome to part 4 of my networking tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous videos, make sure to go check those out first. Today we'll be spawning in players and setting up some super basic player movement. As always, there's a link to the code on GitHub as well as to the Discord server down in the description. If you get stuck, make sure to check those out. We'll start by spawning in the player when a client connects. In order to help us work with Vector3s and Quaternions, we'll import the system.numerics.vectors package. Open up the NuGet package manager, open the browse tab, and search for system.numerics. Click the system.numerics.vectors package, click the checkbox, and hit install. Then click OK when prompted. With that installed, let's create a new class called player. This will house all player related data and logic. Add a field for the player ID, his username, and his position and rotation. Make sure to include the system.numerics namespace at the top. Now create a constructor and use it to initialize our fields. Then open up the client class and add a field to store a reference to our player. At the bottom, create a new method called sendIntoGame. Inside, assign a new instance of our player class to the player field. Once again, make sure to add the system.numerics namespace. Next, add a for loop to loop through our client's dictionary. We'll use this to send the information of all other players that are already connected to our new player. After that, add a second for each loop. This one will send the new player's information to all other players as well as to himself. Make sure to swap the parameters that we're passing to the spawn player method. Doing this incorrectly will result in all sorts of problems. Now open up the packet class. Add spawn player, player position, and player rotation to the server packets enum, and add player movement to the client packets enum. You can also delete the UDP test and UDP test received IDs since we don't need those anymore. In the server send class, delete the UDP test method and replace it with a spawn player method. Inside, create a new packet instance using the spawn player ID and then write the player's ID, username, position, and rotation before sending it through TCP. We want to use TCP because this is an important message which we're only sending once per player that needs to be spawned, so we can't really afford to lose this packet. We're getting two errors here because we're trying to write a vector 3 and a quaternion to the packet, but none of the write methods take in either of those value types. Open up the packet class, and before we forget, copy over the packet ID enums to the client to make sure they're identical. Back on the server, we're going to add two overloads for the write method. Duplicate the method for strings twice and delete everything inside. Make sure to add the system.numerics namespace so we can use the vector 3 and quaternion types. Since a vector 3 consists of three floats, we'll simply call the overload that writes a float three times, once for each component of the vector. We'll do the same for quaternions, except this time we'll write four floats because quaternions have four components. Then copy these new methods to the client side. Back on the server, we need to add methods to read our vector 3s and quaternions as well. To do this, simply return the appropriate type by creating a new instance using the floats read from the packet. Now let's get rid of these errors. In the UDP classes connect method, remove the call to server send.udp test since we deleted that packet. At the end of the welcome received method in the server handle class, we want to spawn the player, so we'll call the client's send into game method. Then delete the UDP test received method. Open up the server class and remove the line that adds the UDP test received packet handler to our dictionary. On the client side, do the same with the UDP test packet handler in the client class. In the client send class, delete the UDP test received method, and in the client handle class, the UDP test method. Now save your changes and return to Unity. Create four new scripts called Game Manager, Player Manager, Player Controller, and Camera Controller. Open up the Game Manager and replace everything inside with our Singleton Initializer, which you can copy from the client class. Then add the Singleton at the top. Create a new dictionary called Players. This will store all player info on the client side. Now add two game object fields, one for the local player prefab and one for the player prefab. At the bottom, create a new method called spawn player. As you might have guessed, we'll use this to handle anything related to spawning players. Inside, create a game object variable. We can use an if statement to check if the player that we're spawning is the local player, and then we can instantiate the appropriate player prefab. After that, grab the player's player manager script and assign the ID and username to their respective fields. Finally, add the player manager script to the player's dictionary using the ID as the key. 
To fix the errors, open up the Player Manager class, delete everything inside, and add a field for the player's ID and username. Back in Unity now, create two new folders, one for prefabs and one for materials. In the scene, create a new empty game object and rename it to Player. Attach the Player Manager script and drag it into the prefabs folder. Now create a new material called Player. I'll make mine blue. Duplicate it and rename the copy to Local Player. I'll set this one to green. Now open up the player prefab, add a capsule, and apply the player material. This will be our player model. Exit the prefab editor, delete the player object from the scene, duplicate the player prefab, and rename it to local player. Open the local player prefab and apply the local player material to the capsule. Then attach the player controller script to the root object and create a camera. I set its Y coordinate to 0.5, which positions it roughly where the player's head would be. Lastly, attach the camera controller script to the camera and close the prefab editor. Create a new empty game object in the scene, call it game manager, and attach the game manager script. Then assign the prefabs to their respective slots. We still need to handle the spawn player packet, so open up the client handle class and create a new method called spawn player. Inside, read out the player's ID and username. Since I forgot to do this earlier, copy the methods for reading vector 3s and quaternions from the server to the client. Then read out the player's position and rotation. Finally, call the game manager's spawn player method at the end. The last thing we need to do is add the spawn player packet to the client's packet handler's dictionary. To test this, start the server, open up Unity's build settings, click add open scenes, and then hit build and run. For some reason I had an empty folder in here named new folder, so I renamed that to build. You probably won't have such a folder, so just create a new one. Once the game configuration window pops up, select your desired settings and click play. Then hit play in Unity. The client build may request permission through your firewall, which you need to allow, otherwise it won't connect. Finally, hit connect on both the build client and the editor client. In the hierarchy, you should see two player game objects, and they should have whichever usernames you gave them. You might only see one capsule in the scene view, but that's just because the two players were spawned in the exact same spot, so they're standing inside each other. The way we'll be handling player movement is by sending the input to the server and then the server will calculate the player's new position and send it to all clients. We don't want clients sending their position to the server since that leaves the door wide open for cheaters to move in whatever way they like whether that's flying, teleporting or just moving fast. Having the server calculate positions using player input keeps the server authoritative and in charge. We won't be dealing with physics in this video since your physics needs will vary greatly depending on the type of game you're building. We'll start by sending player input to the server. Open up the player controller class, delete everything inside, and add a fixed update and a send input to server method. In send input to server, create a bool array and initialize it with the states of the WASD keys. Then call client send.player movement, which we'll create shortly, and pass in the bool array. After that, call send input to server in the fixed update method. Now go back to Unity and open the project settings. In the time section, change the fixed time step to 0.03 repeated to match the server's time step. There's no point in sending input more often than the server actually ticks, and since the Unity time step determines how often fixed update is called, this will ensure that input is sent 30 times per second and no more. In the client send class, create a player movement method with a bool array as a parameter. Inside, create a new packet using the player movement ID and then writing the length of the bool array to it. Set up a for each loop and use it to write the contents of the array to the packet. After that, write the player's rotation and send the packet using UDP. The reason we use UDP here is because this packet will be sent over and over again so we can afford to lose some of them and we may as well take advantage of UDP's extra speed. Now on the server side, add the player movement packet to our packet handler's dictionary. In the server handle class, create a player movement method to handle the packet. To read out the bool array, we'll first create a new array with the length that we read from the packet. Then set up a for loop to populate the array and finally read out the player's rotation. Make sure to add the system.numerics namespace at the top. Now call the player's set input method which doesn't exist yet. Open the player class and create a field called move speed. Since this will be applied every tick, we'll divide the value by the ticks per second, which has the same effect that multiplying a value by time.delta time has in Unity. Then add a bool array to store the inputs we received. Now create the setInput method, inside which we'll simply store the parameters in the variables we just created. 
set up an update method, which is what we'll use to calculate any player movement. Inside, we'll use a few if statements to basically convert our bool array of inputs into a vector2 which represents the local direction the player wants to move in. At the end, call the move method and then create that below. Now set up a vector3 which will represent the player's forward direction. This is the direction he's facing in. To calculate this, simply transform a unit length forward vector by the player's rotation. We also need a vector3 that points perpendicular to the forward vector. To calculate this one, take the cross product of the forward vector and a unit length up vector, and then normalize the result. Then calculate the direction to move the player in by multiplying the input direction's x component by the right vector and the y component by the forward vector. Finally, add the move direction multiplied by the move speed to the player's position. Below that, send the player position and player rotation packets. We're not sending position and rotation in the same packet because although we want to send the position to everyone, we're going to send the rotation to everyone except to the player who the rotation actually belongs to. The way we currently have it set up with the player simply sending his rotation to the server, the client is the authority on all things rotation. We're not checking if the rotation has changed too fast, we're simply taking whatever rotation the server receives as what is correct. Since our setup is client authoritative for rotations, there's no point in introducing the unnecessary snapping that comes with overriding a player's rotation. Depending on your game, you may want server authority for rotations as well, in which case you'll probably need to look into client prediction and reconciliation to avoid noticeable jittering on the player's screen. Those are much more advanced topics, so I won't be going into them in this series. To keep things simple, we'll just let players dictate their own rotations. Now in the server send class, create the player position method. Inside, create a new packet instance with the appropriate ID and write the player's ID and position. Then send the packet to everyone using UDP. Next, duplicate the method, rename it to player rotation, replace the packet ID and write the rotation instead of the position. Finally, pass the player's ID to the send UDP data to all method, which will make sure the packet is sent to everyone except him. Open the game logic class and before the call to threadmanager.update main, add a for each loop. We'll use this to loop through all connected players and calculate their movement by calling their update method. Now head over to the client and add the necessary packet handlers to the dictionary. Open up the client handle class and create a method called player position. Inside, read out the player's ID and position and then apply it. Duplicate the method and configure it to work for rotations. Back on the server, I forgot to initialize the inputs array, so do that in the player constructor. I also left out the minus sign in the update method second if statement, so add that in. Then start the server and connect with our Unity client. You should be able to move around. Finally, we need to allow the player to look around. Open up the camera controller class and delete the contents. This will be a pretty generic camera controller script and none of this is related to networking so I won't go into any details. Basically, we rotate the player on the y-axis and the camera on the x-axis. This prevents the player model itself from tilting and only allows it to spin. We also draw a ray in the player's forward direction so we can see which way he's facing. Return to Unity, open the local player prefab and assign the player manager script to the slot in the camera controller. Restart the server, press play in Unity and connect. You should now be able to look around and movement will be affected by the direction you're facing. Let's try this out with two clients. Build the Unity project, restart the server, and connect with the build and the editor. Both clients should now be able to see each other moving around. If this isn't the case for you, you can compare your code to mine on GitHub and you can also join the Discord server and ask for help there. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, make sure to smash the like button. It only takes a second and it helps out my channel tremendously. In the next part of the series, we'll be properly handling disconnections and tying up some loose ends, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to always get notified when I upload new videos. With that said, thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it and I'll see you again next time.